Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the October DAC web webcast. I am Shara Savage, the Education Administration Program Manager in the Division of Assessment and Accountability Support within the Office of Assessment and Accountability. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope that each one of you have enjoyed some time off and enjoyed this beautiful fall weather. So let's take a look at the agenda for today's DAC webcast. We'll start with Kristen Roseberry providing us with fall senior ACT administration reminders, covering important information as window one closes and window two opens. Next, Kristen will move into the spring of 2025. It's hard to believe that it's here already. The spring 25 junior ACT administration training registration, sharing key dates and registration information for this important training. After that, Chris, uh, Tiffany Christopher will provide some case screen updates discussing important deadlines approaching. The next, uh, Krista Mullins will update us on the Kentucky Alternate Assessment Program. Then I will come back and provide information on the administrative regulations for public comment, focusing on regulations currently open for feedback. Then finally, we'll conclude with some uh, new updates related to House Bill 6 website requirements. So let's get started. Kristen, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Shara. Good morning, everyone. As Shara said, my name is Kristen Roseberry, and I want to give you some reminders. Um, let me move forward. I want to give you some reminders about our fall 2024 optional uh, senior ACT administration. So test window one concludes on fr Friday, October the 11th. The pre-scheduled pickup date for materials is October 14th, and the receipt deadline is October 18th. If you need any information about preparing those materials for return, those can be found in the test coordinator, test coordinator manual in its sections titled Collecting, Packing, and Returning Materials After Testing. I've also linked other resources, um, Step 6 from the ACT Hosted Tested website, and How to Return Standard and Accommodated Test Materials on this slide. I also wanted to give you some reminders about Test Window 2 that opens up on October the 15th. As of yesterday, you can begin creating those test sessions until October the 25th. The pre-scheduled pickup date for Test Window 2 is October 28th with the receipt deadline of November the 1st. I've also linked some resources on this slide and, as well as the previous slide that might be helpful as you navigate through the remaining, remaining time during our test windows. Now I want to give you some information about the training opportunities for our spring 2025 junior ACT administration. OAA is partnering with ACT to offer two in-person trainings for the spring administration. One will be in Lexington on November the 13th and one will be in Bowling Green on November the 14th. The information is targeted primarily for test coordinators, but other test, testing staff is welcome to attend, such as test accommodations coordinators and district assessment coordinators. Please ensure that attendees register for these events using the appropriate link based on their preferred location. Also note that the content will be the same across both training sessions, so there's no need to attend both. We will also be given ELA credit um, for those that attend the training sessions. So next, I believe I turn it over to Tiffany, but first I want to ask Ben if there's any questions. Hey, good morning, Kristen. Um, currently, we haven't received any questions, but as always, we circle around at the end of our webcast and ask any questions that got missed, so we'll check back in then. Thank you, Ben. I will now turn it over to Tiffany. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Oops. I have a few case screen updates for you today. My name is Tiffany Christopher, and I am a program consultant. Um, let's see. The deadline for districts to enter and submit Brigant's core assessment and self-help and social emotional data into the online management system and prior settings data into Infinite Campus is October 15th. Final automated email reminders concerning the OMS and IC will be sent out on October 11th. And final IC data extract will occur on October 14th. 
a few reminders for us to share today. We want to ensure that the data has been entered into OMS for students who transferred into the district after the screening window. If you have identified missing students in the OMS, you'll want to refer to Appendix M in the case screen implementation guide for guidance on resolving missing entries. After reviewing the appendix, please notify Ben Riley with the student's SSID number for any students missing in the OMS. Make sure not to include any personal information such as their last name, first name, or birth date. That's all the case screen updates that I have for you today. Uh, ben, do we have any questions regarding case screen? At this time, we don't have any. Um, we'll circle back around at the end uh, just in case any trickle in while we are going through our webcast today. Thank you, Tiffany. Great, thanks Ben. Uh, since there's no questions, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Krista. Thanks so much, Tiffany. Um, and hello everyone, hope everybody's doing well. Um, so I'm bringing to you some uh, updates with the Kentucky Alternate Assessment Program. I'm Krista Mullins, one of the program consultants here in the Office of Assessment and Accountability. Um, so one of the first things I wanted to remind you about is the materials for the attainment tasks will be shipping the week of October 21st. Um, and so I do ask that if you have not received your materials for that window one um, to by Monday, October 28th, to please email dacinfo at education.ky.gov so that we can follow up on those shipping materials and make sure you have them for when that window opens. Uh, another reminder is that early access to the Student Registration Database, or SRD, will open on Tuesday, October 22nd for you all to be able to verify and edit your rosters in there. Um, and then also um, approve those teachers in there as well. The qualification quiz in the online training system, or OTS, for the attainment tasks will close on Friday, November 8th. Um, just as a quick little reminder, as we've had some questions about the quiz, is that quiz questions have changed um, since there are some changes with the delivery of the AKSA this year. Um, and all of those answers to those quiz questions can be found in the training materials. Um, I'm happy to talk with um, teachers or districts if you are uh, having any questions or um, any issues with those quizzes. Feel free to reach out to me. Just wanted to remind you that window one administration will open on Tuesday, November 12th. Um, all students who meet eligibility criteria must complete both window one and window two. Um, and just a reminder, window two is administered in the spring, um, but AKSA is one full assessment. It's just broken between two windows. So students, regardless of when they move into the district, um, do need to complete both window one and window two. And then the Quality of School Climate and Safety Survey, or QSCS, is administered only during window two, um, so not during window one. Um, and another question that I do receive is about medical non-participations. Those are submitted during window two, so if you do have a medical non-participation that you are wanting to submit, you'll need to wait until window two to submit those in SDRR. Moving on to the Transition Attainment Record, or TAR, um, the TAR training and administration began on Monday, September 30th. Um, same with the TAR as for the ATs, that the early access to SRD will open for you to verify and edit your rosters on Tuesday, October 22nd. The TAR qualification quiz will close on Friday, December 20th, so that's something a little bit newer this year. Um, in past years, it has stayed open a little bit longer, um, but that will close on Friday, December 20th. Um, and the SRD will open for TAR score entry on Tuesday, November 12th. Um, Sherry Craig from the Office of Career and Technical Education was unable to be with us this morning, so she asked me to bring some alternate career readiness updates to you. Um, so early access to the Career Readiness Database, or CRD, for you all to be able to verify and edit your rosters will begin on Wednesday, October 30th. And then the CRD will officially open for career work experience certification or the CWEC 
completion status on Tuesday, November 12th. And then the CWEC qualification quiz opened in the OTS on September 6th, and it will close on Friday, December 20th. I believe that's also new, similar to the TAR, where it has that closing date a little bit earlier. Um, she also wanted everyone to know that teachers must successfully complete the quiz to enter the CWEC completion status in the CRD. Now moving on to the Employability Skills Attainment Record or ESAR score entry um, in, the S in the CRD begins on Tuesday, November 12th. The ESAR qualification quiz will open in the OTS on Wednesday, October 11th, and it will close on Friday, December 20th, just like the CWEC and TAR as well. Successful completion of the quiz is required for teachers to enter scores in the CRD. If you have any questions regarding the CRD or ESAR or the CWEC, please contact Sherry Craig in the Office of Career and Technical Education or OCTE. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and turn, or before I turn it over to Shara, um, I'm gonna ask Ben if he has any questions for me. Hi, Krista. I'm currently refreshing our DAC info inbox to make sure we're getting any that are coming in. And it looks like we are not got, we've not gotten any at this time. However, I know Sherry's getting ready to come on. We'll check one more time before we sign off and answer any questions that come in. All right. Thanks so much, Ben. Um, and now I'm going to turn it over to Shara. Thank you, Krista. Thank you, Ben. Uh, next, I'd like to provide you with some important information and highlights about three proposed regulation amendments that were approved by Kentucky Board of Education in August and are currently open for public comment. These regulations pertain to Kentucky's testing administration and accountability system, which are key components in ensuring the integrity and fairness of uh, our educational assessments. So let's dive in. Uh, to in looking at each regulation and some highlighted changes. The first regulation we will discuss is the 703 KAR 5080, our administrative code regulation. You are all very familiar with the administration code. This regulation provides test administrators with guidelines uh, considered appropriate in preparing students for assessments, in administrating them, and providing proper security of test materials. The code applies to administrations of all state assessments that are included in the accountability reporting. There are a, a few key proposed changes. The majority of edits are updates that are needed as a result of our move to online testing. The administration code was written when states were testing um, where they were primarily paper. With the online testing, there are items such as student testing tickets and the seal codes that are that need to be treated as secure materials. So also the language has been added uh, to include those. The proposed amendments also aim to clarify what should be reported as an allegation and to simplify the allegation progress process by eliminating the testing board of review, which has rarely made an, any impact on the outcome of an allegation. The second regulation is 703 KAR 5240 which deals with the accountability administrative procedures and guidelines. Key changes in this regulation includes the regulation changes uh, the language of from A1 to accountable school. Other school types may be added in the future, and this will provide flexibility if accountable schools are other if other accountable schools are introduced. It adds full-time enrolled online virtual and remote learning programs into the definitions and adds how these programs will be reported in terms of accountability through a separate annual report distinct from the accountable schools regular reporting. We also want to share 
704-KAR-3535. Although this regulation focuses specifically on full-time enrolled online, virtual, and remote learning programs, we included it here because it addresses accountability for students attending these programs. The proposed changes will require students attending full-time enrolled online, virtual, and remote learning programs to be enrolled in an accountable school. Now, for comments, um, comments can be provided in two ways. So the first is the upcoming public hearing on the proposed administrative regulations. This hearing will be held on October 23rd at 10 a.m. Eastern in the State Boardroom on the fifth floor uh, at 300 Sauer uh, Boulevard here in Frankfurt. If you are interested in speaking at this hearing, you must notify KDE in writing at least five working days prior to hearing to the hearing to confirm your intent to attend. If no notifications are received by that deadline, the hearing may be canceled. This hearing is open to the public and anyone who wishes to be heard uh, will have the opportunity to comment on the reg proposed regulations. For those unable to attend the hearing in person, you may still participate by submitting written comments on the proposed regulations. Written comments will be accepted through October 31st. Now, please note that these proposed administrative regulations are still in administration review process in accordance to KRS Chapter 13A. Once this review is complete, they will become law. You can find the official version of the KDE regulations, including both the final and those under review on the Legislative Review Commission's website. If you wish to provide any comments or have any inquiries, please direct those to Todd Allen, our General Counsel here at KDE. Um, so Ben, this um, I'll pause here. Uh, are there are there any questions coming in on public hearing before we move on to the next uh, topic? Hey, Shara, I'm uh, looking at our inbox as I just refreshed it, and I'm not seeing any questions at this time. But we can loop around again at the end to make sure we catch them all. All right, thank you. So next, let's take a uh, look at House Bill Six. I want to highlight some important updates regarding House Bill 6 website requirements as it relates to the 23-24 assessment and accountability data, which was publicly released on October the 3rd. DAX received a spreadsheet and within uh, the data files that includes the percentages of students performing at proficient and distinguished levels in both reading and mathematics. This information is uh, crucial for updating student performance data on the district and school websites as required by House Bill 6. It is important to remember that the data should be displayed separately for each school level, elementary, middle, and high school, just as it is provided in the spreadsheets. The data should not be averaged or calculated differently in any way. District websites should be updated with the 24 the 23-24 student performance data by Wednesday, October the 16th. Any future data files, for example, those provided after the 10-day regulatory period, will also need will also re be required uh, to update those websites within 14 days if there are any changes to the percentages of students performing at the proficient or distinguished levels. Additionally, beginning with the 23-24 student uh, performance results, superintendents will need to provide an assurance that is, requ that is required data has 
been posted to both the district and the school websites. This insurance process will be added to the grant management application and planning system or GMAP in the upcoming weeks. Superintendents must complete and sign this assurance no later than Sunday, December 15th. Okay, now um, I will stop there and see if there are any uh, questions on either of the topics that we just covered, Ben. Ben, you're on mute. My apologies. We don't have any that have come in over those two topics. We did. Let's oh, that is a personal question. Well, I will get that. There was a case screen question, Tiffany, but it has some student information in it that we'll get over and we'll handle that internally. Um, but that said, looking ahead, we don't have any questions at this time. OK, thank you, Ben. So as we wrap up today's presentation, we want to thank uh, you for your attention and in your participation today. If you have any questions or would like to provide comments, please feel free to send uh, us an email at dacinfo at education.ky.gov. Additionally, um, don't forget to mark your calendars for the next monthly DAC webcast, which is scheduled for uh, November the 14th at 11 Eastern time. Uh, please note that that is the same time uh, as the AC tree, ACT training in, in Bowling Green. Uh, so thank you once again for your participation and uh, we look forward to hearing from you and have a great rest of your day.